Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of the violin introduction. Previously, we have discussed about the violin's introduction and history. We hope you have learned a few interesting facts from it. If you have not seen the previous video, then you can catch up with it by clicking the link in description. Here in today's video, we will continue the introduction with its construction and mechanism. Therefore, before we begin, if you are new to this channel and like the content what we post, then go and hit the subscribe button along with the bell icon so that you'll not miss any new videos when we upload them over here. Let's get started. A violin generally consists of a spruce top, the soundboard also known as the top plate, table or belly, maple ribs and back, and two blocks, a neck, a bridge, a sound post, four strings and various fittings, optionally including a chin rest which may attach directly over or to the left of the tailpiece. A distinctive feature of a violin body is its hourglass like shape and the arching of its top and back. The hourglass shape comprises two upper bouts, two lower bouts and two concave C bouts at the waist providing clearance for the bow. The voice or sound of a violin depends on its shape, the wood it is made from, the graduation, the thickness profile of both the top and back the varnish that coats its outside surface and the skill of the luthier in doing all these steps. The varnish and especially the wood continue to improve with age, making the fixed supply of old well-made violins built by famous luthiers much sought after. The majority of glued joints in the instrument use animal hide glue rather than common white glue for a number of reasons. Hide glue is capable of making a thinner joint than most other glues. It is reversible, brittle enough to crack with carefully applied force and removable with warm water when disassembly is needed. And since fresh hide glue sticks to old hide glue, more original wood can be preserved when repairing a joint. More modern glue must be cleaned off entirely for a new joint to be sound which generally involves scraping of some wood along with the old glue. Weaker diluted glue is usually used to fasten the tops of the rib and the nuts of the fingerboard since common repairs involve removing these parts. The purfling running around the edge of the spruce top provides some protection against cracks originating at the edge. It also allows the top to flex more independently of the rib structure. Painted on box purfling on the top is usually a sign of an inferior instrument. The back and ribs are typically made of maple, most often with a matching stripe figure referred to as flame, fiddle back or tiger stripe. The neck is usually maple with a flamed figure compatible with that of the ribs and back. It carries the fingerboard typically made of ebony, but often some other wood stained or painted black on cheaper instrument. Ebony is the preferred material because of its hardness, beauty and superior resistance to wear. Fingerboards are dressed to a particular transverse curve and have a small lengthwise scoop or concavity slightly more pronounced on the lower strings especially when meant for gut or synthetic strings. Some old violins and some made to appear old have a grafted scroll, evidenced by a glue joint between the peg box and neck. Many authentic old instruments have had their necks reset to a slightly increased angle and lengthened about a centimeter. The neck graft allows the original scroll to be kept with a baroque violin when bringing its neck into conformance with modern standards. The bridge is a precisely cut piece of maple that forms a lower anchor point of the vibrating length of the strings and transmits the vibration of the strings to the body of the instrument. Its top curve holds the strings at the proper height from the fingerboard in an arc, allowing 
each to be sounded separately by the bow. The sound post or sole post fits precisely inside the instrument between the back and top at a carefully chosen spot near the treble foot of the bridge, which it helps support. It also influences the modes of vibration of the top and the back of the instrument. The tailpiece anchors the string to the lower bout of the violin by means of tail gut which loops around an ebony button called the tail pin, sometimes confusingly called an end pin like the cello spike, which fits into a tapered hole in the bottom block. Very often the E string will have a fine tuning lever worked by a small screw turned by the fingers. Fine tuners may also be applied to the other strings especially on a student instrument and are sometimes built into the tailpiece. The fine tuners enable the performer to make small changes in the pitch of a string. At the scroll end, the strings wind around the wooden tuning pegs in the peg box. The tuning pegs are tapered and fit into holes in the peg box. The tuning pegs are held in place by the friction of wood and wood. Strings may be made of metal or less commonly gut or gut wrapped in metal. Strings usually have a colored silk wrapping at both ends for identification of the string. For example, G string, D string, A string or E string and to provide friction against the pegs. The tapered pegs allow friction to be increased or decreased by the player applying appropriate pressure along the axis of the peg while turning it. Now let's talk about the strings. Strings were first made of sheep gut, commonly known as cat gut, which despite the name did not come from cats, or simply gut, which was stretched, dried and twisted. In the early years of the 20th century, strings were made of either gut or steel. Modern strings may be gut, solid steel, stranded steel or various synthetic material such as purlon, wound with various metals and sometimes plated with silver. Most E strings are unwound, either plain or plated steel. Gut strings are not as common as they were once but many performers use them to achieve a specific sound especially in historically informed performances of Baroque music. Strings have a limited lifetime. Eventually, when oil, dirt, corrosion and rosin accumulate, the mass of the string can become uneven along its length. Apart from obvious things such as the winding of the string coming undone from where players generally change the string when it is no longer playing true, with good intonation on the harmonics, losing the desired tone brilliance and intonation. String longevity depends on string quality and playing intensity. Now the pitch range. A violin is tuned in fifths of the notes G3, D4, A4, E5. The lowest note of the violin tuned normally is G3 or G below middle C, C4. On rare occasions, the lowest string may be tuned down by as much as a fourth to D3. The highest note is less well defined E7. The E two octaves above the open string which is tuned to E5 may be considered a practical limit for orchestral violin parts, but it is often possible to play higher depending on the length of the fingerboard and skill of the violinist. Yet higher notes up to C8 can be sounded by stopping the string, reaching the limit of the fingerboard and or by using artificial harmonics. Let's see the acoustics. The arch shape, the thickness of the wood and its physical qualities govern the sound of a violin. Patterns of the note made by sand or glitter sprinkled on the plates with the plate vibrated at certain frequencies called Cladney patterns are occasionally used by luthiers to verify their work before assembling the instrument. Now let's see the sizes. Apart from the standard full 4x4 size, violins are also made in so called fractional sizes of 7x8, 3x4, 1x2, 1x4, 1x8, 1x10, 
1 by 16, 1 by 32, and even 1 by 64. These smaller instruments are commonly used by young players whose fingers are not long enough to reach the correct position on full-sized instrument. While related in some sense to the dimension of the instrument, the fractional sizes are not intended to be literal description of the relative proportions. For example, a three-fourth sized instrument is not three-quarters of the length of a full-size instrument. The body length, not including the neck, of a full-size or 4x4 violin is 356 mm or 14 inches, smaller in some 17th century model. A 3x4 violin's body length is 335 mm, which is 13.2 inches and a 1x2 size is 310 mm, which is 12.2 inches. With the violin's closest family member, the viola, sized is specific as body length in inches or centimeters rather than fractional sizes. A full-size viola averages 40 cm that is 16 inches. However, a individual adult will determine which size of viola to use. Occasionally, an adult with small frame may use a so-called 7 by 8 size violin instead of a full-sized instrument, sometimes called a lady's violin. These instruments are slightly shorter than a full-size violin, but tend to be high quality instrument capable of producing a sound that is comparable to that of fine full size violins. Five string violin sizes may differ from a normal four string. At last, we have the mezzo violin. The instrument which corresponds to the violin in the violin octet is the mezzo violin, tuned the same as violin but with slight longer body. The strings of the mezzo violin are the same length as those of a standard violin. This instrument is not in common use. Well, that was the construction and the mechanism of violin. We hope you have understood today's concept. If you have any queries, then feel free to contact us. You will find the contact details down in the description. If you have liked today's video, then don't forget to drop a like to it and Share it with your family and friends so that even they get to know about violin. Tune in with us in the third part of the violin introduction. To be notified when we upload the next video, you should go and hit the subscribe button along with the bell icon so that you will not miss when we upload the next introduction of your favorite instrument, the violin. You can follow us over Facebook and Instagram for more updates, links are in the description. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video very soon. Till then you can watch the rest of the videos which are going to appear right now here on the screen.